Uh, in in MCL 321 automotive system project, now we, uh, we are going to explain the working of the uh, gearbox of a uh, Jeep, Mahindra Jeep. So uh, let's have a look on it. Cool. Cool. So this gearbox has three shafts. Uh, this is input, this is output, and the one is auxiliary one. So first of all, let's have a look on how uh, how much number of wheels are there on the each uh, gear. So uh, this one has uh, 17 number of feet, uh, this one has 24 number of feet and this one has 34 and this one has 42. And after that, after that, after that you can have a look on the inner shaft, there is a shaft on the inner side. So this one has uh, 26 number of feet and the other one here on the back has 16 number of speeds. So there is a shaft in the lower portion of the gearbox that you can see over there. Uh, so as you can see over there, so in that shaft, this one has 40. This is 40. Uh, this has 40. Uh, this gear has 40 number of feet. Uh, that one has 22, and that one, uh, that one has 32, and this one has. 23 and the other one on the back has 40 number of uh, number of beats so now let's have a look on the mechanism or the how the different gears are engaged in this gearbox so let's first of all have a look on the uh, gear number one so actually when you pull, uh, pull this shaft to the uh, left uh, rightmost portion of the gear and the other one is on the rightmost portion of the gear then you can see that the gear number one is engaged as you can see that uh, this one is rotating on a lower speed than the input one okay now we will try to engage the third, uh, second number of gear so for that we have to push it on on this side and the lower one so this one this one when this gear is engaged with the gear beneath uh, uh, this so the gear number two is engaged so like you can see this gear is this gear is engaged with the other gear on the other side so this is gear number two see now we will have a look on the gear number three for this we have to put uh, put back uh, put it back on the rightmost side okay, and we have to engage this gear with that gear okay. So you can see this is the third gear. This gear is engaged with that gear on that side. You can see this gear is engaged with that. So this one is the third gear. As you can see the speed of this output shaft has been increased. Uh, as from the earlier now now let's have a look on the fourth gear now to engage the fourth gear we have to directly uh, directly connect the input shaft with the output one. so for uh, doing that we have to we have to put this gear on that gear so it is just done by just sliding it on the this gear so now you can see that both the input and the output shafts, uh, shafts are directly connected via these two gears so now they are rotating on the same speed the input and the output so this one is the fourth gear you can see that the speed has been increased now let's have the look on our last gear that is the reverse gear now to apply the reverse gear we have to engage this gear with the gear uh, 
there. As you can see, there is a gear there. So we have to engage these bolts. So to, now you can see that if this gear is engaged with the other gear on the back uh, back side. So this is the reverse gear then. So now so this is these. Okay, guys. So the compound epicycling blade consists of four different assemblies. Uh, the assembly here consists of three different components. The first of all, the sun gear is mounted on the central shaft. After that, it is surrounded by three planet gears, and covering it, the ring, which is called as ring. It is also called as ring gear. And this is the. So as we can see here, it has four different assemblies. First of all, the one on which I am keeping my right hand, the first assembly. Then followed by it is the second assembly, and also we can see that the first and the second assembly they both are mounted on the same shaft. That is up to here from the start. This is the first shaft. Following it comes the third assembly, which is mounted on the later shaft. That is the second shaft, and after it comes the last assembly, which and these two are mounted on the same shaft. So basically, uh, with the comment, they, they have four degree of freedom because of the, the four different assemblies, and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot have all the all the different assemblies working simultaneously. So we keep one of the assemblies as a constant, which is a fixed assembly. It might be the planet gear, it might be the sun gear, and from there uh, we. Change for different assembly for different combinations. So like each any of the assembly can be logged, and the rest of the assemblies can be managed to obtain the output uh, rotation. So the sun, uh, the sun, uh, the sun gear has 20. Uh, the, the sun gear in, uh, in the second assembly has 25 number of teeth, while the planet gear has number of teeth as 25. Yeah. And the main, the ring gear, the main ring gear of both the assemblies are 75 teeth. So depending on the number of teeth, it has a different number of rotations, and the rotations will have different gear perspectives. So now we'll show you one of the one of the very basic uh, way how this gear plane works. So as you can see, we can lock any of the four given assemblies, and uh, the rest of the three assemblies can be made to rotate uh, on their own. So let's lock the let's, let's lock uh, lock the second see. one first. So this is this this we gear is locked. This sec, uh, second assembly, as you can see, now I'm obtaining the rotation, and you can see the uh, rest of the three assemblies rotating simultaneously. Also, we'll have a look at the engaging mechanism. As you can see, the first and the second assembly in them, they are uh, although they are mounted on the same shaft, but uh, they are connected with their planet gears being mounted on the same shaft. All the three planet gears of respective assemblies, they share the common shaft. As we can see, the same happens in the second uh, later two assemblies. Again, the planet gears are uh, attached with same uh, shaft. So now. Uh, So let's yeah. lock the second one. I have locked the second. Now, when we rotate this, you can see this is a lot. There is a there is an output rotation here also, and only the three only the three of these gears rotate. Three assembly rotate. The the third the second assembly is stationary. If you change the fixed position to the third let's one, let's lock the second assembly. Third one. Third, third one. Third one. Now now you can see it has been locked. The rest of the three can be easily rotated. Now there's a one very interesting thing uh, you can observe here. When you rotate the third assembly, uh, the, if you rotate the second assembly clockwise, the later two assembly will rotate anti-clockwise. Anti This can be very, very, very easily explained by the help of the chart. We'll have a look at the chart uh, because uh, we always know there is a negative sign of the gear perspective, the gear change shifting mechanism. So we'll explain it through the, uh, through the following chart, which you can see in the current in the in, in the slide. Okay. So hi guys. In the previous two sessions of the video, we have looked through the gearbox and the compound epicycling gear train. Now we we know that uh, nowadays there, uh, for the proper rotation of the tires, there is a need to have different powers in the different part of the wheel, and that that power uh, differentiation is done by differential. So this is the basic structure for differential here. Uh, this is the these are the gears of the differential. So you can very well uh, see that this is one the this is one of the gear. And this is the middle portion of the differential. It has four different gears, and we have two shafts here. This is the this is the exploded exploded part. These are the two these are the two shafts of the differential, and the two shafts will go to two different wheels. And depending on the requirement of the torque and the requirement of the power, there will be a power distribution in the in both wheels. 
So how differential basically works? The, the differential works on the mechanism of gear locking system in which uh, depending on how much power is required and how much power it has to be distributed on the two shafts, it might be equal, then the both the shafts will rotate with an equal speed and, and the gear will lock in the same way. It might be happen that one of the wheel which uh, required a much greater torque than the second wheel and the greater power, so the differential will provide their power. It will segregate their power by through this gear mechanism. So this this is the problem. These are the four gears, and you can see two of the, the all the gears are located 90 degree in each other. It, it's like a pivot gear gears, and this is the final gear. Now we'll now we'll join the shafts, and we'll show you how differential actually works. So you can see over here. So now see, if both the shafts are required same power, uh, they, if both are rotated with the same speed, then you can see here. If, if both are rotated in same speed, then there is a normal rotation. But if one tire is needed a higher speed and the second uh, the second tire is needed needed a much larger speed, then then, then this is the mechanism. Such mechanism happens. Is this is locked. You can see one of the shaft is locked, locked over here, here, but the other shaft can be rotated. If I if I rotate it much with a much smaller speed than the second shaft, then it will rotate like this. Also, the shafts can be rotated. In this this will also move, but there is a there is a there is an unequal uh, velocities, unequal velocities of both the shafts. So these these gears actually help in the differential uh, different power distribution between the and especially during the turning of the vehicle, especially during the term turning of the vehicle. Look there, there's there's a there's one more gear there. This. 